Welcome to the lecture for Module 9 on Green Theory. In this lecture, we will define Green Theory and compare it to some of the other theories we've talked about before, discuss some of the basic elements and assumptions, describe some of the criticisms, and close with an example where you can see Green Theory in action. So to begin, Green Theory is an approach that brings ecological thought to bear on international relations. It asks a couple of questions. First, what should we value in international relations? And second, what level of political organization is best positioned to address environmental problems? So to compare green theory to some of the theories we've covered before, let's look at some of the differences. When looking at realism, the environment was only considered important insofar as it related to security issues. So for example, if we identify that there is a connection between resource scarcity, like having not enough water or not enough food, and the environmental drivers of resource scarcity, and the conflict that emerges as a result of that problem, then that is where realists would actually pay attention. But otherwise, as we know, realists tend to focus primarily on security issues and have traditionally ignored other issues outside of that, like environmental problems. Liberalism also has something to say about environmental issues. It looks at the way in which institutions can be leveraged to solve environmental problems. This involves not only looking at states like realism would, but also other non-state actors like intergovernmental organizations and even some non-governmental organizations. And then finally, Marxism is another theory that brings something to bear on the issue of environment. Um, it critiques existing structures, in particular capitalism, and how capitalism results in environmental degradation and how that might cause some conflict between states or conflict between different kinds of groups throughout the international system, like uh, the capitalist owning class and the workers. But none of these fundamentally think about the role of ecological thought and how that might shape some of the questions and ways in which we even engage in international relations. So one thing that's really important to know is that green theory, it pursues different kinds of scaling or rescaling politics in first by looking vertically. So it compares centralized versus decentralized political decision making and how that might result in improvements in environmental performance. And then there's also horizontal rescaling, which deals with actors, networks, issue linkages, which involves things like connecting the environment to trade or the environment to conflict and complex interactions between all of these things. And so basically green theory takes international relations but rescales it both in vertical and horizontal dimensions. So two of the bedrock assumptions of green theory are, one, that we need to look beyond traditional political communities, i.e. nation states. And so examples of this are green social movements that are transnational in their operation and bioregions, where instead of using the nation state as the form of political unit that we operate under, we would actually look instead at the regions, environmentally speaking, that different parts of the world fall under. So there are deserts, there are coniferous forests, there's ocean. Um, so these would be the proper domains of political decision making as opposed to the artificial boundaries that we know that nation states were created under. Second, uh, what's really crucial is that there's a normative component here or a moral component, which is that green theory adopts a, an ecocentric or nature-centered approach, which is compared to an anthropocentric or human-centered approach, which helps to reject a split between domestic and international politics when you see that it's not the people who are the focus of our political decision-making, but how nature is included in and impacted by our international relations. There are, however, some criticisms worth mentioning. First, it is very difficult to rewire how humans think about values and our sense of community and to expand ourselves into nature, even though, as we'll talk about in a future lecture, this is something that's commonly seen in some indigenous societies. Second, there's no guarantee that political organization at various scales will meet the degree of coordination needed to address global environmental challenges. So even if we wind up de uh, decentralizing our efforts to the very local level, that may not be enough to deal with challenges that are transboundary in nature. And finally, 
it doesn't pay enough attention to other kinds of issues in international relations. Think of things like trade or human trafficking, which don't necessarily or primarily have an environmental component to them. So an example of green theory in practice can be seen in the rights of nature, which are legal rights extended to natural entities, which are found at the national level in the case of Ecuador, but also in the, at the subnational level, like in the state of Florida. So the rights of nature take an ecocentric approach to safeguarding the environment. That is, that we should provide and extend these rights to nature for its own good, not necessarily because humans will benefit from it. Um, it is based on ideas from indigenous groups, as I mentioned, mainly from Latin America and New Zealand, and it disrupts conventional ideas about who counts as a legal subject by considering natural bodies or entire ecosystems as eligible for legal rights. And so finally, it is created by networks of actors which marries local worldviews with laws at different levels of governance. So this is a great example of we, where we see both vertical and horizontal rescaling and a kind of ecocentric ethic applied to environmental governance. And so rights of nature constitute one example where green theory is used to protect the environment and has implications for international relations.